Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your girl and Shira and that's <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, I know it's been a while since I posted. Well, this is this video is coming out after my first Ghana vlog. So I hope you guys enjoyed that vlog. Obviously, it's going to be a series and I'm going to try and get those videos out as soon as possible. I've been trying to like taking a break and the break ended up being about three months. It's kind of awkward talking to a camera like this. I haven't done a video like this in a long time. This video is going to be a book haul. We went to Barnes and Noble today and it was very fun. It's actually a bad idea to take me to bookstores because I will end up spending all your money. We had a cap of $50 split between me and my sister. So it was basically only two books each. And then I bought a book for myself with my own money. And then I also got a book in Ghana and I thought I would just add it to this book haul because why not? I haven't read it yet. And so, yeah, I've been really into books really lately. Well, I've always been a book kid. I've, I was always reading, you know, finishing a book in a day and I've gone back to my roots. Can you? Can you like move? Yeah, can you like not be in the background? I've always been a book kid. So I've been getting back to my roots, especially this summer, finishing a book a day. And by the end of the summer, I will be doing a video talking about all the books I read, but yeah, that's a little intro. And without further ado, let's get into the book haul. Okay, so the first book that we're starting off with is Homegoing by Ya Gyasi. Um, I probably butchered that, which is really bad because I'm Ghanaian, but and she's Ghanaian. I'll read the summary on the back for you. Efia and Essie, two sisters with two very different destinies, one sold into slavery, one a slave trader's wife. The consequences of their fate reverberate through the generations that follow, from the Gold Coast of Africa to the plantations of Mississippi, from the missionary schools of Ghana to the, the dive bars of Harlem. Spanning continents and generations, Yag Yassi has written a miraculous novel, an intense heartbreaking story of one family and through their lives, the story of America itself. I got this book when I went to Cape Coast Castle, you know, that was one of the castles in the West, in the, in West Africa where they held the slaves and it was like the prominent one where they held the slaves for slave trading, you know, the Atlantic slave trade. And so this book is centered around that slave trade and I got it in the gift shop. And it was always on my reading list for a while now. I found out about the book a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, but I just never got around to reading it. And it was right there and I decided to take it. Why not support a Ghanaian author, you know? And so, yeah, I'm really excited to read this one. I think it's going to be a very interesting story. You know, I don't like a lot of uh black trauma and like slave and historical things i kind of like to indulge myself into like the joyful stories of black people and black characters just because there's already so much like darkness surrounding the black community and a lot of trauma but i'm really interested to get into this book so yeah i'll let you know how it goes the next book i got was the inheritance games i actually don't know where I was recommended this book probably by Haley Pham, but I'm not sure. And if not by Haley, then it was definitely on TikTok. I'll read the back for you. Avery Grams has a plan for a better future. Survive high school, win a scholarship, and get out. But her luck changes in an instant when billionaire Tobias Hawthorne dies and leaves her virtually his entire fortune. The only catch? Avery must move into his sprawling mansion full of secret passages, riddles, and codes. Unfortunately for Avery, Hawthorne House is also occupied by the family that just disinherited. This includes the four Hawthorne grandsons, dangerous magnetic boys who grew up with every expectation that one day they would inherit billions. Heir apparent Grayson is convinced that Avery is a con woman and is determined to take her down. But his brother Jameson views her as their grandfather's last hurrah, a twisted riddle, a puzzle to be solved. Caught in a world of wealth and privilege, with danger around every turn, Avery will have to play the game herself just to survive. Okay, so this plot kind of reminds me of Knives Out. I don't know if you've seen that movie. I've seen it. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I just love the plot twist. Like, you just don't expect it. So I'm hoping there's like a huge plot twist in this book. Um, and I'm kind of getting like an enemies to lovers 
an enemies to lovers trope and that is always the best it's one of the best tropes um i like i prefer academic rivals to lovers but even like enemies to lovers is like perfectly fine with me so yeah i'm excited to get in i'm not i don't really read mystery books so it'll be interesting to get into it you know i'm more of like a mystery watcher not a reader but i'm excited so i'll let you know how it goes and it's the first book of a trilogy i think so hopefully this one is really good and i'll definitely invest in the other two books moving on to the next book this one i didn't actually go into the bookstore looking for like i did with inheritance games um i just saw it on the shelf and i really like the cover it's a beautiful cover um i saw girls of color and i said yes yeah let me read the back for you ava cj jordan and martha listed in alphabetical order out of fairness have been friends since kindergarten now they're high school seniors facing their biggest fears about growing up and growing apart more than just colleges on the horizon though one of these girls is destined to become the president of the united states but which one is it ava the artist who's struggling and afraid to ask for help could it be cj the one who thinks she's got everything figured out but clearly doesn't maybe it's jordan the group's resident journalist who's ready for more than their small ohio town can offer and don't overlook martha who's confused about what and who she wants and whether her dreams are even worth having from sarah watson creator of the hit tv show the bull type comes a new story of best friends who have one another's backs through every romance breakup stumble and triumph this inspiring endearing novel shows that when young men, women come together they can achieve anything even a seat in the oval office i love female solidarity especially um woman of color solidarity there's just something about i was holding the book upside down but there there's just something about women of color coming together you know it's so easily it's so easy to pit ourselves against each other it's just there's a lot of negativity that can be fostered when you're constantly being pit against each other so just hearing that it's like a diverse friend group of girls coming together and they all are going to college because i'm going to be a senior this coming fall so college is definitely on my horizon so i just feel like this would be a good a good read honestly i don't have much to say and like i said i love the cover it's called most likely by sarah watson and yeah super excited and now for the last book okay i'm not saying romance is my favorite genre but i love a good romance story and i love stem romance i actually read the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood Mwah. chef's kiss i love that book grumpy sunshine trope yes amazing so i decided why not pick up another stem love story type thing um this is called long story short by serena kaler i saw this one in barnes and noble i just saw the cover and i'm like wait this might actually be really good let me read it and see if i want to buy it and so let me read you the inside flap in the sparkling debut a homeschooled math genius finds herself out of her element at a theater summer camp and learns that life and love can't be lived by the textbook Growing up homeschooled in Berkeley, California, Beatrice Quinn has always dreamed of discovering new mathematical challenges at Oxford University. She always thought the hardest part would be getting in, not convincing her parents to let her go. But while math has always made sense to Beatrice, making friends is a problem she hasn't been able to solve. Before her parents will send her halfway across the world, she has to prove she won't spend the next four years hiding in the library. The Compromise, the Connecticut Shakespearean Summer Academy, and a detailed list of teenage milestones to check off. If Beatrice wants to live out her Oxford dream, she has to survive six weeks in the role of normal teenager first. Unfortunately, hearts and hormones don't follow any equations. When she's adopted by the group of eclectic theater kids, mm, sounds like Glee, and immediately makes an enemy of the popular and annoyingly gorgeous British son, enemies to lovers, British son of the camp's founders, Beatrice quickly learns that relationships are trickier than calculus. With her future on the line, this girl genius stumbles through illicit parties, double dog dares, and more than her fair share of Shakespeare. But before the final curtain falls, will Beatrice realize that well, you just realize there's more to life than what she can find in the pages of a book. Love a good STEM female lead, like woman in STEM, woman in STEM. I'm just hoping this book gives me enough motivation to get through pre-calc this year. Sounds like a cute story. Again, love the cover. Like all of these books have like the most amazing covers that I have ever seen. 
and I'm so excited to get into them. Let me know what you think based on the summaries that I gave you. And also let me know other book recommendations, books that you think I should check out based on these books, other books that you think, you know, match the vibe of the books that I shared. And yeah, I can't wait to come back and let you know what I thought about these books. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like this video, share with whoever you think would like it. Um, trying to get to 1K as soon as possible. That's been my goal for the past two years. And it's, pos it's partially on me for not, you know, posting as often, but it's also on you guys to subscribe to make sure that the community continues to grow. Yeah. So I'll see you guys in my next Ghana vlog, but then I'll also see you at the end of the summer with my final book haul. Thank you so much. See you guys later. Have a nice night.